we're asked to determine the limits of the given vector functions. To determine the limit of a vector function, we determine the limit of each component. And because each vector function has three components, we need to determine three limits to determine the limit of each vector function. And to save some time, I've already set this up. Notice for this first limit, we have the limit of the x, y, and z components as t approaches zero. Here we have the limit of sine t divided by t as t approaches zero. We should recognize this from calc one as a special limit, which is equal to one. But if we don't recognize this, notice how as t approaches zero, sine t approaches zero and so does t, which means this is in the indeterminate form of zero divided by zero. And we can apply L'Hopital's rule, which means this limit is equal to the limit as t approaches zero of the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of sine t is equal to cosine t. The derivative of t is equal to one. And now for this limit, cosine t is continuous over all real numbers. And therefore we can find this limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us cosine zero, which equals one. So whether we recognize this is a special limit or we apply L'Hopital's rule, the limit is equal to one. Next we have the limit of e raised to the power of seven t as t approaches zero. The exponential function is continuous over all real numbers, which means we can find the limit by performing direct substitution. This is equal to e raised to the power of seven times zero, which is equal to e to the zero, which equals one. And for the last limit, we have the limit of the quantity one minus cosine t divided by t as t approaches zero. This is also a special limit from calc one, which is equal to zero. But once again, if we don't recognize this, as t approaches zero, cosine t approaches one, and therefore the numerator is approaching zero, and the denominator is also approaching zero. Because we have the indeterminate form of zero divided by zero, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. This is equal to the limit as t approaches zero of the derivative of one minus cosine t is zero minus negative sine t or sine t. The derivative of t is equal to one. Sine t is continuous over all real numbers and therefore we can find the limit by performing direct substitution. This is equal to sine zero, which equals zero. Which means the limit of the vector function is equal to the vector one i plus one j plus zero k, which we can just write as unit vector i plus the unit vector j. Looking at our second limit, the first step is to find the limit of each component as t approaches zero. Here we have a linear function, which is continuous over all real numbers. We can determine the limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us zero plus eight, which equals eight. Next we have a limit of a rational function as t approaches zero. Notice how the rational function is undefined at t equals eight because we have division by zero, but the function is continuous around zero from the left and right, which means we can find the limit by performing direct substitution. This is equal to six divided by the quantity zero minus eight, which equals negative six eighths or negative three fourths. And then finally we have the limit of natural log of the quantity t plus eight as t approaches zero which we can also determine by performing direct substitution. This is equal to the natural log of the quantity zero plus eight, which equals natural log eight, which if we want is approximately 2.0794. Now that we have these three limits, we know the limit of the vector function is equal to the vector eight i minus three fourths j and let's write the z component as plus natural log 8k. I hope you found this helpful.